All right, here's part two of the show Colin Mills and I did. We're, we're now going to delve into all the prospective players that the Warriors could maybe trade for. These are players that fall within the realm of reality. Try to be realistic here. Not just in terms of contracts, but in terms of availability, in terms of a fit for the team. So sit back and relax. Here's part two of Locked On Warriors. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Here is the list, if you're ready for it. I'm just going to name them one by one. Kylan, you give me your thoughts. And if you don't mind monitoring the chat, if anyone throws anything on top of that. First yeah. up, and this is a long list. They're not super long, but and, and I'll give quick reasoning behind each of it. So first off is a player I think the Warriors actually pursued. Uh, he's a veteran. He, he, he chose not to go to the Warriors, but he might be available in a trade. And that's Serge Ibaka of the Milwaukee Bucks. He only plays... 11.3 minutes per game. He could be a very valuable uh, bench rotation piece for the Warriors. He hits a fantastic corner three. He's tough and tough as nails. I think the Warriors can get him if they throw in a first round pick. Your thoughts on Serge Ibaka? Um, I don't dislike Serge Ibaka, and I want to go through your entire list because there were a couple names that stuck out stuck out to me. And and you know, I think there is a difference between some players that you would love to have but are kind of a pipe dream, and some players that are more realistic. But like. I just, I don't know, like a lot of these older bigs, I just feel like if you don't need a high volume of minutes from them, like what does it hurt to add them to the second unit? Right. Do we just right. Need, and especially like situationally, like there's certain teams where you maybe need more from them, but you don't need a ton from them every single night. Because as we've discussed, the Warriors starting five, you know, they've already got the chemistry. They're doing great. And I think in some circumstances, the lack of size in the second unit doesn't hurt the Warriors. Um, it's just, like I said, I feel like certain matchups is where the Warriors are exposed inside. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I, I don't hate Ibaka and I want to get to a couple, uh, others on your list who I really like. I also, have another question, I also have another question for you that yeah. someone posed in the chat, but it's not really on this wavelength. So, okay. Go to throw it. Do you want to ask now or, or wait? Yeah. Okay. I'll ask now. I'll ask now before we get too far into the trade thing. All because right. someone made a good point. They said that. Steve Kerr being expected to develop young players, but also win championships is an unfair expectation because it's never been done before. And I, I'm curious as to what your response is to that. And I do think there is some legs to that point because the Warriors in the last, you know, two years, two seasons, one year, whatever, last two draft classes have brought in five teenagers, five, yeah. five teenagers. Like that is a lot. And that is super young. And like this off season, we didn't see them add the same number of veteran depth as they had last season. So I think it's a fair question to ask is, are the Warriors expecting too much of Steve Kerr? Are we expecting too much of Steve Kerr? Have you seen that done before where a, and I'm trying to think, you know, where a championship team had five teenagers on it at the same time who, you know, were expected to be developed while also, you know, defending a championship. I will, you know, I hear the, the the two timeline thing a lot. I think a lot of that is narrative and not necessarily reflective of reality. Just because right now they're not doing two, a two timeline thing because they're they're playing the two way guys a lot more than the youngsters. Um, and and look, here's why I don't I don't freak out about that. You're right. I've never seen it, not to the, to my immediate memory. Um, but the reason why I guess I have so much faith in these youngsters, at least with Moody and Kaminga. Wiseman mm -hmm. is a different story. We got we got to wait and see. Is they they were a part of this thing last year. They've earned my trust because they were they weren't like like the Warriors probably would have won the title without them, but they still were part of a world championship team and they were starting postseason games in the process. Like that matters to me. Like like that that to me shows that these guys have been there and done that and that they're not going to fail you in those big pressure moments. They've already survived it. And and to me, I guess the reason why one of the many reasons I'm disappointed in occur this year is take Jonathan Kaminga, for example, right? Like last year, he averaged 17 minutes per game, 16.9 to be more specific. You couldn't add seven, eight minutes to that this year without severely compromising your team. Like, I, I don't see what the big deal is there, you know? And then Moses Moody last year, he averaged 
uh, 12 minutes per game, 11.7. You couldn't ratchet that up to 20 and live with that. I, I don't, that's the part that blows my mind. The Wiseman thing's a different story. He didn't play at all last year. H integrating him is, is a bit more challenging, but it's not like these are Moses Moody and Jonathan Kaminga are two pieces that like are brand new. They were there last year. They, I think, did fine as 20, 19 year olds who Kaminga was 19 the whole season, 18, in fact, at the start of the year. And to give them just five, 10 more minutes in year two, I don't think would have is a detriment to the team. And that's where I feel like, I guess my opinion on this differs with a lot of others, or at least differs with Kerr, who clearly doesn't agree with me. Um, that's my take on it. I don't know. Um, do Fair. I make sense? Well, that was that? a good no. question. And I wanted to get an answer because I think it's an interesting topic and an interesting discussion. I think he could definitely be handling the young players a different way and they should, should be getting more playing time. But at the same time, I get what someone's saying and that, you know, that's hard to do when you have five teens on a roster that's yeah. trying to win a championship. So, you know, I think it's an interesting discussion. And now I'm sorry, but go ahead with your trade proposals and research because I am excited about it. But I think it was D who dropped that question and appreciate the question. Keep them coming. I just want to throw, by the way, I don't I don't always uh, take the bait. Like Bruce Merrill writes, Lamb is on the team. That's why the young is up developing. I'm going to leave it there, okay? Because that's bait. That is bait, man. You try to get me, but I'm going to move on. Okay, so – um. Serge Ibaka, I mentioned. And again, some of these players are in the realm of reality, right? These are realistic pieces, um, you know. So another one is Robin Lopez with the Cleveland Cavaliers. He only averages 8.8 .8 minutes per game. He's been rumored. Uh, he's been linked to the Warriors for years. I don't know why the Warriors did not pursue him last offseason. That's one of the many baffling parts of last offseason. But I think you can get him in a trade. Your thoughts on Robin Lopez? Yeah, no, that was the name that when you showed me the lists of people you've been researching, like I immediately liked, like I like his game. I just think it would be fantastic to add a seven footer into the second unit who is like ready to play because that's, you know, ideally what the Warriors would turn to James Wiseman for. But like, I just don't think they're ready to rely on him in important situations on a consistent basis. Not to say that Wiseman won't get there. So I'm not Wiseman bashing. I'm just saying, I think it would make a big difference to have an experienced Seven footer in the second unit. Yes, you mentioned, you know, less than nine minutes per game right now. He's definitely, you know, in the twilight of his career. I think he's mid thirties at this point. But like, again, we don't need someone to do a ton. Like we just need some size in the second unit. And I know some people have tossed out and you're going to mention like Miles Turner. Someone said in the chat, Sabonis. Great. Yes, those are guys who could come in and start. But like, I just don't know if those are necessarily realistic players. So like to me. No who is realistic that can also bolster the second unit. And I don't dislike Robin Lopez. I mean, yeah, he's 34. His twin brother is, is Brooke Lopez. Who's still playing great basketball for the bucks. All yeah. right. Uh, and by the way, don't uh, Sabonis don't count on that folks. The, the Kings love him. I don't exactly. think he's on the block. I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think. Yeah. We're in the realm of great. Like, don't get me wrong, but I just don't think some of these are realistic, you know? Absolutely. So, um, and, then, and I'm starting with the Eastern Conference first. Uh, and look, we have to turn this into a two-part show. That's fine. As long as, Kylan, you don't have a hard out. Um, I do. Uh, totally. Yeah, I do. What time? What's your... What's your uh, what's I got to be out in the next 10 minutes-ish. I got to be out. Okay, we can do in 10. I can do in 10. All right. Um, Dwayne Dedman of the Miami Heat averages 12 minutes per game. I think he could be acquired for, let's say, a, a Jermichael Green in a first-round pick. Is he worth it? He he's a he's a tough nugget inside. Um, if you're looking for strength and solid rebounding and some defense, I think he could be serviceable. Dwayne Dedman, your thoughts? Serviceable, oh, you... I think is the key word. Um, and I think someone who brings in defense would be a, a critical addition for the Warriors uh, because defensively they've struggled um, this season, and especially with a second unit. So a big who is stronger on defense would be better. Um, but I think he's serviceable. I mean. Agreed. I, he doesn't, he doesn't excite you, but yeah, I he, doesn't exactly, he doesn't excite me, but he would yeah. be serviceable. I, I, I just think anyone at this point would help, but you know, serviceable. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> All right. So moving on from Miami, this is a player that a lot of people have talked about. Miles Turner of the Indiana Pacers. He's averaging 16.7 points per game this year, 7.8 rebounds per game this year. Most importantly, perhaps 41.7% from beyond the arc. So he can shoot outside. He gives you defense. Um, before I tell the audience why that's not going to happen, Kylan, your, your thoughts on Miles Turner? 
Well, now you don't got to preface it by saying it's not going to happen because I would love Miles Turner. I think a lot of Warriors fans are totally advocating for Miles yeah. Turner. Unfortunately, I do agree with you that it's not possible, but like he would come in and I think it would be great if we could bring in a starter and then bump Moody. I think Moody would not Moody. I mean, I think that Looney would be excellent in the second unit. I actually think that Moody could Moody, I keep saying Moody, Looney would be strong um, with the second unit. And I know you yep. even mentioned that when bringing up potentially mixing up the youngsters and old players. Like, I think Looney is, is, would be strong, you know, coming in off the bench. And you mentioned Miles Turner's outside shooting, I think makes him, you know, especially, and, you know, just makes him much more potent than Looney. And I think he would make a difference in that um, starting rotation. I would love Miles Turner. I just don't think there's a lot of downs to it. Unfortunately, I just don't think that's going to happen. And, and, you know, who do you have to give up for Miles Turner? Then that comes to be the question. But go ahead and explain why this is not going to happen. Because well, yeah, I, I think he's that, attainable. Like, you, it, it, for, for Miles Turner, you probably realistically have to give up Wiseman, maybe also a Moody. Yeah. The salaries could work. Yeah. The reason why I don't see Miles Turner coming is because he's a very me-centric type player, meaning anybody that's going to come and play for the Warriors has to be a, a, a full advocate for – Kerr's ethos of share the ball, uh, selflessness, and and Miles Turner does not fit that bill. He has complained publicly about not getting the ball enough. Um, he needs the ball. Someone mentioned in the chat he's injury prone, which is true. Um, it could happen. You never know. I'm not Notre Dameus, but I don't think Miles Turner will come for those reasons. Um, she mentioned that Turner would require all three of our lottery picks to acquire, which the might. Warriors didn't do. It's possible. His price might be high. Yeah. So yeah. Um, now shifting gears, the Atlanta Hawks might be in the trade market here. And there's two players that stick out on their roster. Um, one of those is John Collins, who's young. Uh, he's averaging 12 points per game this year, 7.4 rebounds per game. He commands $23.5 million, though. Um, so you'd have to be giving up be something beyond just Wiseman and Moody uh, to, to make the salaries work. And then another player, which I think would be a little more realistic, and I would love him on this team, is Clint Capella. He pulls in $18 million per year, so you could, in theory, get Wiseman and Moody. That would work, salary-wise. Um, your thoughts on either of those two from the Hawks? Yeah, I just, like you said, I think the price to pay for John Collins wouldn't be worth it, even though I don't um, dislike his play. And then I like the – I like – um Clint Capella he adds a little bit of size and then yeah I think that the Warriors need a center like I said he fits the bill um I would be fine with that I would be good with that addition yeah I wouldn't mind yeah John Collins no I mean he would bring you some interior toughness he's 6'9 but yeah. the money and he's he's just not I don't think he's consistent or efficient enough Clint Capella mm -hmm. I think would be amazing um the Toronto Raptors this is a big name his name was mentioned in trades with the Warriors a year or two ago um, asking price is big. So you're going to have to send realistically back a Draymond Green, somebody with a lot of salary, but Pascal Siakam, I think he's 28 years old. This is a kid who's been on a world championship team. He is a stud of a, of a basketball player. I would love him on the Golden State Warriors. I would trade Draymond Green for him. You'd be, you'd be buying eight years of youth, or I'm sorry, six years, five to six years of youth. You'd be buying outside shooting with him. He plays defense. He rebounds. I love Pascal Siakam. Your thoughts on him and, and the asking price, be given how much money he makes. Yeah. So I just, so you'd be willing to give up Draymond Green for Pascal Siakam. I think that's interesting. And I like him and I think he'd be a good addition. Um, I mean, I like his play, but I just, he's another one that I don't know if the Warriors would be willing to pay the asking price, A. Mm -hmm. And B, you know, like the Draymond Green Steph Curry connection is going to be really hard to replicate with any other big because, you know, Draymond Green and Steph Curry at times in the court look like they have one brain because they yeah. played together yeah. for so long and read the game so well. So while I do think that he would be, I mean, like I said, in a lot of aspects, he would be an upgrade from Draymond Green. And you mentioned, you know, you gained the youth, but at the same time, um, you know, I just, and I also just don't see Steph being okay with Draymond Green being traded because, you know, ultimately Steph Curry has to sign off on that. Right, um, right. I don't see that happening. 
you know, if Draymond were to end up walking away, it's got to be on his own accord because he wants to make more money and, I don't know, go to Lakers or wherever the heck people are all speculating about. I just don't see the Warriors core signing off on Draymond Green being traded for Pascal Siakam. But I think he would be a great addition. And, you know, I he he's another player who I like his game. and I think his inside presence would help. Yeah, I agree. Um, and like I said, these are just just uh, names. Who knows? People are people are throwing in trade clay for Pascal Siakam. I know, I let's say that for another show. I that. I don't think Clay's going anywhere. I think he's a lifer. It's just after his contract expires after next year, he there's no way he's commanding the same dollars. But I, I see him being a lifer. I, I don't know. Um, I just I bark up another tree, please. If you if you're gonna advocate for trading Clay, that I'm never never gonna be saying that. So. So, um, wait, wait, wait. so why are you I'm curious why are you okay with so for trading Draymond but not Clay when Draymond to me is playing much better than Clay is because Dre is also regressing and um and what Dr because you can because the Warriors have shown they could win without Clay um wait let me that doesn't sound right that doesn't support my argument <laughs> yeah, that's the reverse because Draymond because Draymond Green is the names that I throw out there to replace him, um, I, 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 I'm trying to think of how best to word this. A, the punch on pool wasn't a good look, so he created a massive division just right there. He brings virtually nothing offensively, save for passing and uh, his 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 camaraderie, his chemistry with Stephen Curry. I just think between the two. I don't like, I, and maybe this is just a personal thing. I don't like the idea of splitting up the Splash Brothers. I think Clay Thompson, even at 37, 38, can still contribute for the Warriors just because as an outside shooter, that's a skill that won't go away. His role will have to change, but he can still continue con contributing for the team for another five years, right? He just might have to suddenly become a small four that comes off the bench in limited minutes. You can't do that with Draymond Green. When Draymond Green's skills regress and he's no longer a good player, you can't still keep him on the roster and hope that he gives you like something. He's done. Like the, the fact that he can't shoot the ball is the difference, I guess, between the two. Whereas like, a, like you can replace Draymond Green with Pascal Siakam and you're getting size, you're getting outside shooting, you're getting defense. Um, if you trade clay for Pascal Siakam, you're losing a lot of your offense. Like what, like, cause what clay brings to the team, if any, if nothing else is on offense, he spaces that floor so much. And it 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 gives room for Jordan Poole and Stephen Curry and 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 Dante Divincenzo and and Moody to shoot threes without a, a really heavy defensive presence and focus on them. If you don't have Draymond Green in there, your offense will still be fine. Um, Stephen Curry, in fact, his usage rate has gone up so much these last two years that he's shown me he can carry the the, the team offensively without Draymond. Um, Clay Thompson, while yes, he's replaceable. He can still be a serviceable player for the next five, six years still just because of that shot. It's so damn good. Um, does that make sense? I don't know. What do you? It makes a little bit of sense, but I will say that if you're going to bring up like, hey, we don't want to split up the Splash Brothers, like I feel like you can say the same thing about splitting up Draymond and Steph because to me, Draymond and Steph are lighting it up much more this season than last season or then uh, Clay and Steph. And then also when you look at regressions, to me, Clay Thompson is regressing more than Draymond Green, True. Um, at least right now. And I don't disagree with what you're saying in that the style of play and Clay's strengths lend him to being able to play longer in his career than Draymond Green. However, I think what Draymond Green is bringing to the team right now is indispensable because of, like I said, his ability to play with Steph, screen setting. He knows the offense, the way he runs the offense. Like Draymond Green just... And to me, I was very skeptical. Like after the punch, I was, you know, I was like, do the Warriors really need Draymond this season? And he's come out and proved me wrong because I think that he's having a strong season and defensively what he does, I think is going to be very difficult to replicate. Um, so that's why, you know, and to me, like I said, I just feel like Clay Thompson is regressing more at this point. Than yeah, that's fair. Is. And, and to, to be fair, you know, Clay does still space the floor just because players know what he can do and what he's, done before but to me he's not shooting that way this season so you know no. how long is that going to last and you and i have even discussed the possibility when clay's struggling you know does he should he be relinquished to being in a bench role um and so 
you know, to me, if you're if you're willing to trade Draymond, it should at least be in the discussion. You know, it would Clay Thompson be in a trade? Um, however, I would prefer not to trade either of them. I think right now, maybe after the season, if the Warriors don't do well, you kind of start to have those conversations. Is it over for this core? But I don't I'm not ready to say that now. And I think if you trade one of them and break up one of them, then there's going to be, you know, it's going to kind of. I don't know, be downhill. And I also just don't see Steph Curry wanting or being willing to trade either. Um, but well, like I said, if you're going to compare the two, like I feel like Clay Thompson has regressed more than Draymond. Well, here's the other part of it too, is tra- Draymond Green still has trade value. Like I always prefer selling someone while they're high because uh, you can see that regression coming from him. It, it is not an if, it's a when, and it's going to happen soon. Draymond Green will fall off a cliff. I assure you of that. He still has trade value right now. You can't trade Clay for nothing with that $41 million. No one wants him. Um, so that's another part of it as well. I'm not an offense first either uh, individual in terms of my philosophy for basketball. I I believe firmly in what Rick Barry has been advocating for decades. Defense wins championships. I think Clay's actually decent defensively. I, if there's anything about his game this year, oddly, which has been fine, it's his defense. He's doing okay there. Um, but that, that's my thing for Dre. I, I'm not advocating for it either, but I would trade Draymond Green for Pascal Siakam. Your Bulls have three players that the Warriors can make a move for. Uh, Alex Caruso, who reportedly could be on the trade market soon. Andre Drummond, who only makes $3.2 million. You could just do a straight up uh, Jermichael Green for Drummond trade, throw in a pick, bam, he's yours. And then Patrick Williams, their power forward, who makes $7.75 million. Any of those three sound tantalizing to you for the Golden State Warriors, Kylan? So to me, the most attractive of those three is probably, who do I think is the most attractive of those three? Alex Caruso. However, I just think that based on what the Warriors need, that he doesn't fill the void. And to me, I've just been saying over and over again, they need to add more bigs. I think they're already pretty guard heavy. Um, on the flip side, I think that what Caruso brings defensively, the Warriors could use. And I think that would be a positive because defense has been lacking for the dubs. But at the same time, if they're going to target adding one person in this roster, I really do believe it needs to be a big. So okay. that's where I think that, I don't know, maybe Drummond or Williams, but I like Caruso's game a lot. Um, and I think that he would be a great addition to the team, but also someone else just brought this up too. And I think they're right. Similar to Dante DiVincenzo, similar to someone they already have in the second unit. Right. Someone who right. brings a lot of energy and, you know, brings a lot of defensive energy, but I don't know if that's what the, I don't think that's the biggest need the Warriors have right now, if that makes okay. sense. That, you know, I think he would be a great player and great addition, but I think the bigger need needs to be a, a big. And I don't know. Right. Williams versus Drummond. I don't know. Well, uh, the Charlotte Hornets have a couple players. One is Mason Plumley, uh, who's a fine center. Uh, he makes $9 million this year. You could do a Wiseman for Plumley swap direct and have him on your roster. Another player they also have is PJ Washington, a power forward. Um, the only downside of Washington is he only shoots uh, 31.8% from beyond the arc. So he's not quite the three-point shooter he was. He's a young player, but he's struggling this year. Either of those players interest you? Um, I love PJ Washington. I think PJ Washington is a great Same. name. I love him. Super athletic. Um, so I would love to add PJ Washington if it were possible. But I got a jet. It is four thirty, so I got to. Okay, okay, okay. Well, let me. Just, I'll just read the rest of them real quick, <laughs> just so people know it, and then you got to go. Okay, so the rest of the list, real quick. Sadiq Bay. Makes $2.9 million a year for the Detroit Pistons. Not a great three-point shooter, but incredibly athletic. Solid power forward. Same with Isaiah Stewart, their center, who only makes $3.4 million. The Phoenix Suns have Drake Jay Crowder. Uh, he's been available for trade for a while. The Warriors have weirdly been linked to him. I don't think the Suns are going to give Jay Crowder to the Warriors. That seems That's... far-fetched to me of an idea. Um, the Portland Trailblazers, Yusuf Nurkic. I think the, the Trailblazers will trade him if you offer Wiseman and say a first round pick, um, the Utah Jazz of Kelly Olynyk has been talked about. They also have Jared Vanderbilt, who makes four point oh five million. Wouldn't mind either of those. I love Vanderbilt. I think he'd be a great fit. Um, and then two players, and we'll be, and we'll we'll finish this up. The Spurs, Jakob uh, uh, Pertl. Uh, his name's been mentioned a lot. He doesn't like wow me, but whatever. He you know he he plays decent defense. He's a big. And then the last one, and we talked about this off the air, and then you got to go, and we'll wrap it up with this. The Minnesota Timberwolves, obviously that that trade 
did not work. In my opinion, that's one of the worst trades ever in the history of the NBA. But they might move Carl Anthony Towns. I don't think that's a far-fetched idea. And this is where Draymond Green comes into play again. Would you, and I know, I, look, I know you said you don't want to trade Dray, but for the sake of argument, would you trade Draymond Green and James Wiseman to the Timberwolves for Carl Anthony Towns? Mm, that's a tantalizing offer. I love Cat. I think Cat would do really well with the Warriors. I just, I don't know. Would Steph sign off on it? That's my question. Would Steph Curry and Clay Thompson be okay with it? Um, Because I don't know. I just, I like giving the big three another chance, but at least another shot at defending the title before saying, hey, you know what, let's call it, let's give up on that. So I just, I'm a little bit hesitant about a midseason trade involving Draymond. That's that's my only thing. But I think the cat would be a great addition and a major upgrade. However, I also don't know if that would happen. I also want to mention that I actually really like Jay Crowder. I'm very sad that he's with the Suns. I don't see the Suns giving Warriors anything, and they're happy with their team right now. But it's been interesting because I've read reports that supposedly a conversation has been happening behind closed doors for whatever reason. But I just, I don't know. I don't see the, the Suns being willing to to make that trade with the dub specifically. <laughs> Kylan, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to everyone. Um, we'll be back at this Monday of next week. So have a great weekend. The Warriors play the Grizzlies on Christmas Day at Chase Center. I have no idea how that game's going to go. I don't even know who's playing. Uh, but the Warriors are home for 22 days days and eight-game homestand. Um, Kylan, any last thoughts? I know you got to run. So anything else? Are we nope. good? Out. Yep. I'm out. All right. We will be Merry back Christmas, at it Monday, though. So Merry <laughs> Christmas. Have a wonderful holiday. I'll be back on Monday, the day after the holiday. And hopefully we'll be celebrating a Dubs Christmas Day win. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Merry Thanks. Christmas. Happy holidays.